What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Let me get out of this copyright music zone here. So I've done a little thinking since the last video on our log splitter issue with the splined engine shaft and things like that. And I'm just heading out here to the splitter now to confirm what I'm thinking. So let me turn you around and I'll catch you up. Okay, so here's our splitter engine. As you can see from the factory, this had a tapered shaft and then it's got this large sprocket that kind of has a collar that squeezes down on that tapered shaft. Uh, and then it just drives a, about an equally sized sprocket over here. So the problem, if you remember from the first episode, was we need to get from our splined, we have a 19 spline about 19 millimeter, 20 millimeter shaft that we need to somehow get to work with this. And so what I've come up with, and I'm just confirming it now, is instead of trying to adapt the spline shaft to be a tapered or a standard shaft to then find a sprocket that's going to fit that, why not look into a splined sprocket? And so I know they make 19 tooth splined sprockets, I'm just not sure or 19 spline sprockets, I should say. I'm not sure if they make with the correct number of teeth for my application. So I'm just gonna go ahead and count here. Let's start one right of 12 o'clock. Got a nice loud train as always. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve. Twenty. So this is a 20 tooth. I don't really know the size of chain. I can't remember my chain knowledge. It's a 40 chain, it appears. So to keep everything the same, which would be pretty cool, but we can always lengthen the chain and things like that. But to keep our gear ratio roughly the same, we need a 20 tooth, number 40, sprocket with 19 splines. A Lot of information to remember while you're on camera. So let's head inside and see what we can find. Bear with me here, internet is painfully slow today. Here's what I'm finding though, we need as close as possible to a 20 tooth. I'm okay changing the gear ratio by a couple teeth if we have to, but we absolutely have to have the spline and the diameter be the same, as well as the, um, oh what am I trying to say, the chain size. So what I found is that a number 40 chain is also similar to a number 41 or a 420, number 40 being the heaviest duty. And so ideally, we would want a number 40 sprocket to be equally as heavy duty, but if we have to downsize that, the chain will fit. So taking a look here, we have a 14 tooth option. We have a 428 chain, 19 tooth option, and I need to look whether that chain is going to fit or not. Uh, and then we've got an 18 tooth option and a 428 again. Not sure if 428 chain works, but there are some options here, so I need to just narrow it down and see exactly which one's going to work. But they're all in about the $20 range, so I'm still feeling really good that we're going to come in well under what a crankshaft would have been um, if that would have worked and far less work to get it done. So keep watching and I'll let you know what I find here in a second. This is the moment of truth. The new gear just arrived. I haven't even tried it yet. So this could fail, but we'll find out. So I'm going to spin you around and we'll see if this random eBay gear fits our splined Honda shaft. Should also mention the bearing arrived. I haven't checked the size yet, but we're gonna find that out as well on today's video. So here is what the gear looks like. My plan is if it does fit, um, we can either cut this down or grind it off <clears throat> to be about the right distance to put a bolt and a washer in the end. Let's see what happens. Oh man. Look at that. 
goes right on. Very minimal slop by the time it's on there. That's excellent. All right, moving on. So let's take a look at what we've got so far. So far, the gear fits. It's not quite a tight seal in the uh, seal, <laughs> I guess. That was a dumb way to put that. But it's a little bit too small to seal around this, and we kind of knew that. We knew we might need a new seal in there. No big deal. The next thing that I'm encouraged by is our new bearing is just a little bit small, so that's going to be a, a little bit of a tight fit unless I can have this uh, sprocket, let me turn this light off, unless I can have this sprocket turned down just a smidge to fit nicely in the bearing. So the next thing we need to check is to remove the new side plate, knock the bearing out that's in there, and put this bearing in. Because the way that it is right now, the ID of this bearing that's in here is far too large to support this sprocket. Um, something else that's going to be interesting is to see whether it makes any difference, because I don't know that this sprocket goes deep enough into that bearing for it to actually engage the bearing. Um, so I've got to take a look at that and see what the differences might be. So give me a second, I'll pull this off and show you what I find. So here's the conclusion I've come to. I took the cover off here and was able to easily tap the bearing out. And then I pulled the seal, used my press to press in our new bearing. And I'll include part numbers to all of the parts I'm using here so that if you're trying to do something similar, you can. Something else I realized is this gear was never supported by the bearing. That wouldn't make any sense the more I thought about it. The crankshaft is supported by the bearing. You can see, and that's a perfect fit because that's what we matched up when we ordered the bearing. But I don't need to worry about um, my sprocket being supported by the bearing. That would be pretty atypical. And also, it doesn't go down far enough anyway. The splines bottom out, as you can see, before we even get to the bearing uh, inner race. And so that's going to bottom out. I don't even think I'll worry about cutting it down. I'll just put a longer bolt in so that I can keep it as is, keep things nice and square. The teeth fit perfectly on the chain. I just went out and checked them. So all I have left to do, I haven't sealed this yet, so I'll pull it back off put a little bit of RTV around the new gasket, get that tightened down, and then I need to measure up what I need my seal to be. So a lot of times with seals and bearings, you can just measure, take your measurements, OD, ID, in some cases thickness, and uh, the style that you want, and that's how they are um, cataloged, I guess you'd say. So it's pretty standard just to have measurements versus a part number on things like that and uh, just call up to your local auto parts store. They'll be able to look it up for you. And that's what I'm going to do next. So the purpose of the seal will be to go around the diameter of this, but then obviously inside of this diameter, where our old seal, where did I put that? I flopped it right up here. Our old seal had far too large of an ID. You can see there. So all I need is the same OD as this with the smaller ID as this. And so that'll go in and uh, we'll be able to seal things up that way. Which I hope works. That's also a little bit um, atypical, I would say. Typically you're going to seal up against the crankshaft versus up against something that's riding on the crankshaft. And so I hope that's going to work out okay. <laughs> um, I need to kind of think about that some more, whether oil is going to be able to get through the splines and leak or not. Uh, and I don't really know if that's the case, what I'm going to do. So I need to look at the old one and see where exactly that sealed. The problem you run into is that you don't want a seal running around the spline surface because that's just going to tear it up. It needs to be a smooth surface. So I'll do some more figuring on that. and. Uh, Give you the update here once I get it all together and mounted to the machine. After a little more thought, here is what we're going to end up doing. And uh, this is the best I could come up with. I hope it works. 
The seal that needs to go in this hole is 52 millimeters. The ID of the seal, or the OD of this smooth portion on our sprocket is 32 millimeters, and the thickness of the seal is 10 millimeters. So if I get a 32, a 50 by 32, sorry, 52 by 30 by 10, I believe it is, uh, seal, that's gonna go in and that's gonna seal nicely around this. So then what that leaves is our only chance for oil to leak out of the motor is between the splines. There's a chance that just a little bit of oil could get down the splines and run out here. It's gonna be a minimal chance, but it's still a chance. So what I'm gonna do in that case is two different things just to really double seal this. I'm gonna put some black RTV, which is for oil use, around the splines. I'll kind of rub it in here, rub it on here, and slide this on. So that's gonna seal our splines pretty well. And then I'm gonna go another step further. We're gonna have a longer bolt than this, which reaches down in there and has a big washer on it. Might even use the same washer. And I'm gonna put a flat gasket here that seals the washer to here. And what that leaves is a tiny chance that between our bolt and washer it leaks. And I'm gonna put a copper, sort of an oil pan um, drain plug washer around that. So everything will be very well sealed and no chance for leaking. Uh, so all together, I'll put all the parts in the description and I'll show you again once the seal gets here and how I have, every, have everything put together. But all together, we've got about a $50 cover here, $20 bearing, uh, I think about a 25, 20 or $25 sprocket, an $8 seal, and uh, then just this tiny little gasket and washer, which is nominal, plus the extended bolt that we would have needed anyway. So what are we, 50, 75, maybe 100, and a $7 seal. So about $110, $120 to make the conversion from uh, a gear reduction setup to just a straight up setup. And if you remember, I said I think the cheapest crankshaft might have been 150 but could have been 350 and would have required a lot of work. And I've really not done any more work than it would have taken to take the cover off to get to the crankshaft and to put it back on. And so I feel really good about this solution. So again, I'll link all these parts specifically down in the description below. And uh, I'll see you in just a second with the fully assembled running engine. So here it is. I got it bolted to the log splitter and I'm um, using the original chain. It fits fine, operates fine. One thing that I did is added a half link. Um, that way it's just slightly further this direction than it was originally. Reason being is there's an oil dipstick right here that would have rubbed on that sprocket. So I just had to move it just slightly over. The chain is loose, but with these large chains, I'm really not too concerned about it. I actually prefer it a little bit looser. And uh, if needed, there's adjustment right here in the pump to actually loosen that up and pull it or push it this way to tighten that chain up a little bit if there's any, any excuse me, any issue in the future. So other than that, I did put a, a bolt with a copper drain plug washer, a standard washer, and then RTV sealing that. And the only little bit of spraying you're seeing here is the chain lube that I sprayed on there. So with that, let's go ahead and give it a start. It's warmed up. I've had it running for a while here, but uh, I'll let you guys hear it and see it.
and that is running at about half throttle, maybe even less, and uh, it's got tons of power. Oh, one other thing I did to make clearance for the chain is I just had to grind out a little bit of this cover just to make room so it wasn't rubbing. Not a big deal. This is what I'd consider a dedicated engine for this setup. And if there was ever an issue with that later where you had to mount something here, you would just put a new cover on because we've already swapped out the seal and the bearing to where you're going to have to take it off anyway and uh, buy a new bearing and new seal. So anyway, that's it. Thanks a lot for watching. And uh, make sure to like and subscribe as always. Otherwise, I'll see you on the next video.